Jim, I had an idea last night. Dear, you'll never guess what my idea was. Honey, I'll tell you, another day like this, and you can just haul my body off for that same old two-week vacation. That's what I want to talk to you about, our vacation. I thought you liked the lodge. Well, I do, but... Gosh, this is our 15th anniversary, and I think we should do something special. Something different. Like a cruise. A cruise? Oh, the lodge is so much simpler. You know what it's like. We've always had a pretty good time up there. But I think we ought to have more than a pretty good time. Now, last month, George and Alice took a cruise. Aha! Uh -huh. So she put you up to this. <laughs> a trip on a boat with a lot of people I don't know. Sounds just like Alice. She said it was the most exciting time they ever had. Well, it may have been great for her, but you know how enthusiastic Alice gets about everything. Well, at least we ought to go talk to Hal Lawrence before you get all steamed up. Okay, we'll see Hal Saturday and talk about cruises. Now, the Santa Paula and its twin, the Santa Rosa, are the only two ships specially designed for Caribbean cruising. They're completely air-conditioned throughout. They have the most modern equipment. Here, like these stabilizers. Make everything smooth sailing. You can either uh, relax or take it easy, or if you want, you can go on a mad whirl of fun and games. <laughs> How do I know we'll enjoy it? I've never known anybody who didn't enjoy it. Oh, Jim, I know this cruise is good because so many of my clients have taken it and told me so. And this company is the best. They've been sailing for over a century, and they have a reputation for satisfied clientele. I wouldn't know which cabin to choose. Well, that's easy because the whole ship is first class. They have everything you want on board. It's a, it's a floating pleasure island. And you'll have plenty of time to enjoy the ports where you can buy some beautiful things, duty free. Jim, it sounds like fun. Well, I could sure use a good vacation. Come on, adventurer, let's give it a try. Okay, for a wonderful life, happy anniversary. Here's another idea. If you get into New York early, you'll have some time to see the big city. You know, take in a few shows. Jim and Laura really did the town and saw all the sights. Never forget how excited we were as we went aboard the Santa Paula. The band on deck set the mood, and the other passengers looked like the kind of people we'd enjoy spending our vacation with. We both got the feeling we were going to have a marvelous time. The great ship moves outward toward the sea, past the skyline of Manhattan. It is an island of pleasure for every passenger. Each seeks something different. Lucy and Bill Grant want 13 days of rest and relaxation. Bob and Marie Morgan look forward to a perfect honeymoon. For Sally Warner, it is a long plan for and special holiday. Rick Foster simply wants a great two-week vacation. I don't know whether Jim noticed it or not, but I was very impressed when I saw our cabin. We had our own bath and shower. Every room was really first class, and the Bomb Voyage telegrams were fun to read. As we sailed down the harbor toward the open sea, 
I felt that we were on our way to romance and excitement. Life aboard this ship was something new for Jim and Laura, an excursion into a world where the familiar tyranny of the clock is banished. On our first morning out, we had breakfast in our cabin. No one could ask for greater luxury. It was perfect. And after breakfast, we went up on deck. Dr. Grant and his wife, Lucy, whom we'd met earlier, really knew the right possession for soaking up the sun. Everything reminded us of a kind of floating luxury hotel where you could do what you wanted, when you wanted. Bill Grant had taken his cruise before and he introduced us to the captain who made us feel right at home. Later, we met some of the staff. They were of many backgrounds, gave the ship a real continental flavor. It was a fine first day. That evening, the captain gave a party. The ship's hostess introduced us to Marie and Bob Morgan. We hit it off right from the start. Those who had taken this cruise before met again. In this festive atmosphere, the passengers had a chance to get acquainted, and new friendships were begun. We went to dinner with the Grants and learned they were from the Midwest. He often told his patients to take this cruise and obviously enjoyed following his own advice. Everything was perfect in the dining room. The congenial atmosphere, the beautiful view of the sea, and the superb international cuisine for which this ship is famous. During the next two days, Jim and Laura managed to get beaten at every sport possible. But while doing so, they made a lot of friends. For all the passengers, there is ample time to enjoy life aboard this island of pleasure. The outdoor pool aboard the Santa Paula is the largest on any ship. On deck every day, there is a spectacular buffet lunch. For those who prefer informal dining, this fantastic array of food can be enjoyed right near the pool. Behind the scenes, the finest group of chefs in the world make each meal a masterpiece in international dining.
Late that afternoon in their cabin, Jim and Laura toasted their island of pleasure. The ship... The safety and comfort of the passengers are assured by the skill of an expert crew and the perfection of modern machines. Each evening, while everyone is at dinner, countless tasks are performed to make their trip more pleasant. Clean linen daily, fresh towels each time they return to their cabin. Everything is done for their comfort. Curacao, a little piece of Holland in the middle of a turquoise sea. The city is divided by water and connected by a pontoon bridge, enabling to go from one side of town to the other. As it opened to let us through, we sailed right down the middle of Willemstad. a free port, no duty, and I wanted to buy everything in sight. Jim reminded me that there was more to come, so I settled for something we really needed. We had lunch at a restaurant high on a hill overlooking Willemstadt and tasted authentic Dutch cooking for the first time. The afternoon was spent moving through the city. We saw the floating market and the boats from neighboring islands that bring food to the people of Curacao. Everywhere there was a mixture of the old world and the new, the charm of Holland and the magic of this island. The next morning, the sun rises in South America over the mountains of Venezuela. The ship docks at La Guaira, seaport for Caracas. The loading and unloading of cargo is clear evidence of the importance of these ships to the economy of the Caribbean and of Latin America. We had met many interesting passengers from other countries. Some were South American, and Jim and I even managed to pick up a few words of Spanish. to Caracas lies across the mountains on a modern highway. The architecture is symbolic of this nation's rapid growth, and the old churches are part of its proud past. The Teleferico, the cable railway, carried us high above the city. Humboldt Hotel is a wonderful place to have lunch and just look around.
we had a breathtaking view of one of the loveliest cities in South America. At the end of the day, we went to Playa Azul, a beautiful resort nearby. In the romance of twilight, the sun glittered and set in a tropic sea. Early the following morning, the ship stops at Aruba, another island in an azure sea. My first order of business was getting that wife of mine a surprise for our anniversary. All I had to do was keep it out of sight till tomorrow night. On Aruba, there was something of interest for everyone. We saw the great prehistoric stone monoliths and the strange windswept Divi Divi trees. The quaint native houses had a charm all their own. stretch of beach and for the passengers on the cruise, a fabulous hotel with a nightclub and a casino. Talk. We had supper at the famous Bali restaurant, actually a houseboat that sailed to Aruba years ago. We said farewell to this island in the gentle breeze of the Caribbean evening. And on this island of pleasure, the sense of well-being that can be found nowhere else in the world. Marie and Bob are having a honeymoon that will last a lifetime. Dr. Grant and his wife are enjoying rest and relaxation. Rick demonstrates his ability as a sharpshooter. On deck, Jim even has a chance for a little putting practice. During the day, each passenger pursues his own interest. There is no service the ship does not provide. In the late afternoon, while Dr. Grant takes part in a friendly bridge game in the Caribbean lounge, his wife stops by the children's playroom. Here, there is always a trained attendant on duty, enabling passengers to enjoy themselves, secure in the knowledge that their youngsters are well cared for. We were being well cared for, too. The ship presented us with a fabulous baked Alaska for our anniversary dinner. I could tell that Laura agreed this was the best anniversary we'd ever had. And the watch I gave her was the perfect gift. The fourth stop on this cruise is Jamaica, and its flag flies proudly over one of the most beautiful golf courses in the world. Jim got in his 18 holes, making everything perfect. He was a better golfer at sea than on land. We saw the famous straw market and the beautiful native products, all handmade and very colorful. Everything on this island is tuned to Calypso rhythm. A 
little French and a lot native. We were surrounded by art that was both exotic and primitive. Wherever we went on the island, sculpture, painting, music, and dance all seemed to run together into one unforgettable impression. Haiti, the haunting memory of a strange and beautiful land. Heading north now, the passengers once again enjoy a day at sea. Dr. Grant spends some time in the ship's library. Lucy Grant is making a record of the new friends she has met during the cruise. Bob and Marie Morgan do some last minute shopping in the Trade Winds gift shop. It is again a time of fun and relaxation aboard this island of pleasure. Early the next morning, there is a brief stop at Port Everglades for a look at the city of Fort Lauderdale and then the homeward journey. One last beautiful day on board, climaxed by a gala party. Jim and I spent a good part of that last evening remembering. We couldn't agree on what had been best. The nights and days filled with romance and music The fabulous food and service. The beauty of all the far off places we had seen. Or any one of the thousands of fun filled minutes that had made up these 13 days. 13 days of enchantment brushed softly by tropic winds under Caribbean skies. A time of moonlight and romance. A time to remember. A time of pleasure on this island of pleasure.